Okay, next up in our exploration of imaginary and complex numbers is we want to talk about um, the powers of i because this will help us a lot, particularly when we do multiplication and division of, of imaginary numbers. So we need to talk about the powers of i. Let's go ahead and make a chart um, for the powers of i from 0, say, to 9. So let's go ahead and do i to the 0, i to the 1st, i to the second, i to the third, i to the fourth, i to the fifth, i to the sixth, i to the seventh, i to the eighth, i to the ninth, oh, what the heck, let's put i to the tenth in here too. So we're going to come up with the simplified versions for each of these powers of i. And we'll see that there's something interesting that happens here. Let's start with i to the zero power. Well, we know that anything to the zero power, we taught, learned about this in our exponents lessons, anything to the zero power is one. Okay? Anything to the zero power, except for zero itself, is one. i to the first, anything to the first power you should already know is itself. x to the first is x. 2 to the first is 2, and so on. Okay? I squared. Now, when I talked about... Um, imaginary numbers, we said that imaginary numbers were defined as i squared equals negative 1. You could also see that if we do this. If i squared equals i times i, that's the square root of negative 1, which is i, times the square root of negative 1. And we know that if we take a radical and multiply it by itself, it just eliminates the radical, so we get negative 1. There's a little bit of ambiguity, and I don't want to get into it too much. Um, but the rule where we can multiply numbers under our radicals together uh, kind of falls apart here, because if you multiply negative 1 times negative 1, you actually get a positive 1, and you get the wrong answer. So when we use imaginary numbers, we can't use that rule with this particular circumstance. But we can say that a radical times itself just eliminates the radical sign. So regardless of how you look at it, i squared is negative 1. And this is going to be the one to remember. This is going to be the most important one of our powers of i. Okay? i to the third. Well, i to the third is just i squared times i, isn't it? Sure it is. We add exponents. i squared is negative 1. We already said that. Times i gives me negative i. So, so far those are our powers. Let's look at i to the fourth. We could write i to the fourth as i squared times i squared, couldn't we? Well, we just said that i squared right here is negative 1, so that's negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Okay? i to the fifth would be i to the fourth times i, wouldn't it? Well, we just got through saying that i to the fourth was 1 times i is i. Do you see something happening here? You should i to the 6th would be i to the 5th times i, okay? i to the 5th is i times i, that's i squared. We already said that i squared was negative 1. You could also do i squared times i squared times i squared. That would give you i to the 6th, wouldn't it? Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is also negative 1. i to the 7th, i to the 6th times i, i to the 6 is negative 1, times i is negative i. You see something happening here? You should. Take a look at those answers, and take a look at these answers. Yep, we have a repeating pattern here. Let's see if that pattern continues. i to the 8th would be i to the 4th times i to the 4th, at least one way of doing it. i to the 4th, if you look back, is 1 times 1 is 1. So far, so good i to the ninth, i to the eighth times i, i to the eighth is one times i is i, and i to the tenth, oh, I don't know, what should we do here? Uh, let's do i to the fifth times i to the fifth. How's that? What's i to the fifth? i to the fifth is i, if you look back in earlier here, right there. Okay, that's i squared, which is negative one. And I bet if you did i to the eleventh, what answer would you get? Negative i, wouldn't you? So what you see here is a repeating pattern, and that repeating pattern is 1, i, negative 1, negative i, and then it repeats. 1, i, negative 1, negative i, and then it starts again. 1, i, 
negative 1, and i to the 11th would be negative i. So what if I had some random power of i that was not one of these 10? Could I figure out which one of these four possible answers it is? Sure we could. Let's take a look at this. We know, for first of all, that our even multiples of 4, take a look, 0, 4, 8, and I think you can see that the next one would be 12, are even multiples of 4, and perhaps even's not the best word. Whole number multiples is probably a better word. As a matter of fact, let me change that, because it's not just even multiples, it's all multiples of 4. The whole number multiples of 4. Okay, give us an answer of 1. When we add 1 to those whole number multiples of 4, what do we get? We get i as an answer, don't we? So our whole multiples of 4, ditto, plus 1, give us an answer of i. Our whole multiples of 4 plus 2 give us an answer of negative 1. And our whole number multiples of 4 plus 3 give us an answer of negative i. So if, for example, we had, oh, let's just, let's just come up with a, um, an example. Let's just say I had i to the 49th power. Okay? What is our closest multiple of 4 and 49? Below 49. Would be i to the 48th, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be your closest power of 4? This is really i to the 48th plus 1, isn't it? In our exponent. So our even multiple of 4 is 48, but we're 1 higher than that. So my answer would be whole multiple of 4 plus 1 is i. Okay? I find this kind of a little bit of a complicated way to do it. There is an easier way to do this. And that is to simply divide your exponent by 4 and look at the remainder. Okay? If we had 49 and we divided by 4, 1, 4, 0, drop the 9 down, 2, that's 8, and I have a remainder of 1. That remainder of 1 tells me that we were 1 more than the even multiple of 4. So that is i. So here's the easiest way to do it, I think, and that is to take your exponent. We're going to, let me move it down here so we can see it better. Let me move this down. So divide Oops, missing an i. Divide the exponent by 4 and look at the remainder. If your remainder is 0, that means it was an even multiple of 4, your answer is 1. If your remainder is 1, when you divide the exponent by 4, your answer is i, just like we did up here. If your remainder is 2, your answer is going to be negative 1. And if your remainder is 3, your answer is going to be negative i. Okay? So that's all you really need to do. You need to divide your exponent by 4 and look at the remainder. And if a remainder of 0 is 1, a remainder of 1, your answer is i. A remainder of 2, your answer is negative 1. A remainder of 3, the answer is negative i. These are the only four possible answers to these questions. Okay? Now, some of you are going to use a calculator to do some of these. You really shouldn't have to. It's a simple matter of regular old division, which you should know how to do. But if you use a calculator, um, what are you going to see on your calculator? Well, you're going to see here, in this case, if we look back at this problem here, you're going to see an answer of 12 and 1 fourth, which your calculator is going to show you as 12.25, isn't it? If I, continued, if I continued out here and did more of this long division, it would come out to be 12.25. So if you use a calculator, and I would suggest you don't, you need to know how to do the math without a calculator, a remainder of 1 is going to look like a number 0.25.
What's our remainder of 2 going to look like? Well, 2 fourths, if this were a 2 here, I would have 2 fourths, and that would be 1 half, which is 0.5. And I think you can see that your remainder of 3 would be 0.75. Uh, let's do one more. How about I do i to the 103rd power? What is my closest multiple of 4 under 103? That shouldn't take much thinking, should it? It's 100. Okay? 100 is my clear closest multiple of 4. This is 3 higher than that, so my answer is negative i. Or I could take 103, divide by 4, and I would get 25, right? That would give me 100 with a remainder of 3. And we know a remainder of 3 is the answer negative i. That's how we deal with powers of i. Thanks a lot.